is JF again from OSG Studios. Right now I'm going to show you how you can change the volume of the click a bit quicker and easier than the usual method, which would be to go into transport, metronome setup, and you change your levels here. Okay. Or control left click brings up the box quickly, um, which is great, except you've got to change these levels separately the low and the high in my case i've got it set so that the high is the same as the low pitch but of course if i do this um, and you can't work on your project either that's the other thing <laughs> you can't have a quick listen and change the level so it's a bit of a pain i'll show you some other ways we can do this but the first one is to use the control room mixer um i'll show you how to do that how to how to achieve that first of all i'll open up the uh vst connections and first of all you can see here on my outputs i'm using uh channel one and two going out to my monitors just for listening to playback but what i'm going to do actually is open up the studio the control room and to do that press there now it's activated and here it's done it automatically here um, now you can see that the sound will be coming out of out of my monitors but through the studio so let's go back to the outputs you have to make sure these this is not connected you still still have the bus there create the bus but not connected otherwise you're going to get that and the studio together um, which, of course, in the end, you've got too much uh, signal coming out and it will uh, overload. Right. So once you've done that, OK, close that. Open up Control Room Mixer, which uh, I have a hotkey. If I just press Y, there it appears. Now, you can see here, if I play the music, the Control Room disappears. Let's get that up again, shall we? always on top right click this is another tip <laughs> always on top okay now that will stay there now here as you can see you've got click activate or deactivate and the volume this will control the volume that you hear that you're monitoring in so if i press that press the uh, metronome on, on the transport. okay now you can hear it there. We can switch it off. And you can listen to the whole volume of your, your track here. It's now controlled by that. And it's quite handy because it doesn't affect your your main output. You'll still see that coming out here. You can still use that. But now, if you're working on your session, just you can keep that at zero dB. And if you want to turn it up or down, use this fader. Okay. Right. So now the click, the volume of the click, if you see here, if you press alt and left click on the mouse, you can change your volume. Quite simple. Okay, one thing to watch out for here is this little thing here is actually a pan for the click. Tiny little, it's very hard to grab. Um, I, had, I was going mad the other day because my click was slightly off center. To get it to return to the center, press uh, control and left click. And there you are. That might come in handy, I guess, in some situations, but generally you're going to want that in the middle. Um, okay, so that's one way of controlling the click. Now, well, the other way is if um, if you've got a MIDI keyboard or any kind of MIDI controller, um, I've got I've just got a very basic keyboard to just just for um, helping me to program drums or strings or whatever. I'm sure a lot of you have got the same kind of thing happening. 
But what you can also do with the controller is, is use, in my case, I assigned the data entry fader on my keyboard, and that is now the controls the volume level of the click. And it's very simple and quick to do. Um, at the moment, my MIDI keyboard is on channel, set to channel one. I'll show you, first of all, in device setup. First thing you want to do, if you haven't, if you don't see generic remote here, just click that and look for it here. Okay, and now once that's there, you set this. Uh, this is happens to be my MIDI out from uh, input from the Pro 40 Sapphire interface. That one you can leave. We don't need that. Just highlight the first one, and now the first thing I do is just click Learn. Press the key or the fader in this case, um, and it will learn which one you're using. I just moved it there, and you can see it's controller. And we're set to MIDI channel one, which is the same as my keyboard is set on. Um, we'll leave the maximum value. That means if I push the fader right up, it's going to go to 127, and down is going to be zero. You could change that if you want, of course. Flags, I just left that at R which is receive. Okay, now untick that so we don't make any changes there. And now in down here, the same fader, fader one, we're going to, under device, you choose, in this case, metronome. Make sure this is on device. And here, the action, which in this case, again, is click level. And we don't need any flags here. Simply press, press uh, apply, and and now using my using my fader on my MIDI keyboard. Now I can turn the click down or up as I wish, which is very handy. I'm sure you'll agree. And it's very simple to set up. Once you've done that. You might want to just experiment and uh, assign, you can assign anything on your keyboard to do just about anything in Cubase. As you can see, I just did a few. So I can start, uh, I'll use that key to start, stop with the next key, record, rewind, so on. Metronome on and off, I've set the key just under the fader on my keyboard. So as you can see here, if I, if I just press that, it clicks on or off. But you can do just about any parameter uh, with using the keyboard. Once you get into this and understand it, it's actually quite simple, but it's very effective. Okay. So that's that. I hope it helps you, and I'll see you later.